For more, I'm joined by James Chuck Monk. He's a partner at Clockwise Capital. And Ed Lee is corporate media reporter for The New York Times. Good to see both of you. Um, Ed, I'll just start with you and on kind of the, the longer standing issue about ESPN and about cord cutting. You have people now asking for refunds uh, for, you know, sports channels that they ended up not airing the sports that they were looking for. This was typically in the past the big earnings juggernaut for Disney. What is it today? I mean, it still has to be pretty significant. Oh, yeah, it's 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 huge. I mean, ESPN has been the biggest sort of one of the biggest profit drivers for Disney um, and sports. Right. There's no sports. No one's really tuning in. On top of that, as you mentioned in, uh, at the top of the segment, you know, core cutting is a huge factor. So here's the thing. Even when sports comes back uh, and advertising supposedly does, there's just going to be fewer people who are on their on their pay TV account in the first place. So. You know, ESPN was always one of the most expensive line items for cable operators and satellite operators. And so, you know, if there's a chance that uh, people have defected because of the current situation, it's, a, it's not going to make a difference if you have sports. So that's the longer term hit, even if and when sports comes back. And Ed, what about Disney Plus? Uh, you say it, it, despite having 50 million paid subscribers, it might not be enough. It may not be. I mean, uh, so Disney Plus is going to be the one bright spot uh, if you know, say Netflix and Amazon, they were made for these times. Um, Disney is exactly not. I mean, theme parks and sports and going to movie theaters, these are all things you can't do. Disney Plus is the one thing you can do. So they're going to certainly see an uptick from that. So so is Hulu. But the thing is, they probably started a little too late just in anticipation of this current time. And it's also not going to be big enough to replace what they're losing from these other things. So it's always been a long-term effort for uh, Disney Plus in terms of ultimately replacing uh, what the declining cable subs. But mm -hmm. it's it's a little bit late right now. And it's it's not it's not going to be big enough to meet to be meaningful. Uh, hopefully they'll give us good guidance going into this what this current quarter looks like for them. But it's not going to replace the, the big losses elsewhere. So, James, let's turn to some of the assertions you've made, which are super interesting, that you think they should do more in the video gaming space, maybe even an acquisition. Mm -hmm. Why putting such emphasis into this area for the future? Right. Yeah, you have a great headline with Disney Plus, you know, with the 50 million subs. But if you really want to be honest with yourself, Disney is facing more secular challenges than any other company. You know, everything that they do revolves around large crowds getting together, live sports, movie theaters, theme parks. But the reality is when you look at this company, 90 percent of their business is on the decline. And the one bright spot is about 10 percent of their business, Disney Plus, is actually losing money. So we think that given the behavioral shifts that we're seeing with all the technology move forward and people having more time on their hands and spending more time at home, we really think that they have to go after gaming in a very, very big way. And, uh, and if they don't, we think it's gonna be, there's going to be a gaping hole in that ecosystem that there's simply just not going to be able to fill but James, uh, what by happens following the old playbook. When we start to reopen and you know, people aren't at, at home with as much time on their hands, I mean, should they change their business model so much to match the current climate um, or not? And further, what's their edge on video games? You know, are you suggesting they develop more Disney-based video games or that they just buy an outright provider of video game content? I think that they have to go bold, big and bold, the same way that they've done with live sports, throwing billions at it to acquire these rights, to acquire these uh, audiences and eyeballs. And, and I think if they don't, because the fact of the matter is, yes, things can open up, but behavior is changing. There's a reason why Activision, you know, cites, um, uh, well, or I should say Netflix cites uh, uh, Fortnite and YouTube as competitors, because it's, it's no longer about controlling distribution. Con content is emerging from everywhere. So if people are spending more time on the screen, there needs to be a way to monetize that con uh, that, mm. uh, that, that, those eyeballs. Because the fact of the matter is, Disney is predicated on maximizing lifetime value. And if you're not doing the things and behaving in the way that you used to, they're not going to be able to extract value um, on top of the uh, the subscription that they're trying to get from Disney Plus. Yeah, fair enough. And to your point, Activision has named Disney itself as, in proxy statements as a competitor now. So, Ed, I'll, I'll give you the final point here on whether video games is a better way to get in front of the consumer going forward um, or what other kind of splashy options Disney has. I, I like that idea a lot. I think video games is a really smart play in the absence of sports, but even in the future, in near or farther future, when sports does comes back, 
video games going to be that much more important. I think the bigger sort of uh, narrative here is going to be how much time will investors give Disney because it's going to take maybe a year, two years or more for theme parks to really come back, for movie theaters really come back to its place. And if they can't weather that timeline or if investors are, are sort of getting sort of impatient with that timeline, I don't know. I kind of feel like Disney becomes a takeover target. I mean, it's wow. a great, great business. It's a great, lots of great assets. But it's again, it's it's a matter of the waiting game. How much longer will investors give them? And if it, they, they can't turn around sooner or, or investors are impatient, I don't know. I mean, you could see Apple coming in and, and wanting to take, mm. a, take it or take a piece of it anyway. It's so. amazing how they've gone from an absolute darling uh, to a potential takeover target.